The following is a presentation of the Chicago Bears Network. Now on News Radio 1059. This is a special edition of the Bears Coaches Show with Bears head coach Matt Eberflus, general manager Ryan Poles, team president Ted Phillips, and chairman George McCaskey. The Bears Coaches Show is sponsored by Advocate Healthcare and Athletico Physical Therapy. Now from Hallis Hall, here's the voice of the Bears, WBBM's Jeff Joniak. All right, thank you very much and a pleasant good evening, everybody. Yeah, we've got people in the house. That's right. Love it. It's been a minute now, right? A couple years ago uh, was the last time on this annual Labor Day show where we, uh, you finally got an invite, George. You always tell me. You never like, you know, you got the actual show tonight. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Uh, normally on the pre-show yes, show. Yes, the pre-show. Not ready for prime time. Right. Very excited to be on the air tonight. Aren't you glad he's here, everybody? Come on now. This, is, this will be good. Uh, coming Thank up. Thank you for that tepid applause. <laughs> Uh, these are season ticket holders. Uh, we appreciate you being here on this Labor Day. Uh, nice, nice venue. Uh, Ted Phillips, president and CEO here as well. We're in the uh, PNC Broadcast Center, the PNC Studios. And you said, wow, this is, this is nice. We've never done this before. Usually we're in the Peyton Center, yeah. but we got, we got intimate here. And uh, post-COVID, now we're ready to go. So it is a nice venue to share here tonight with these Bears fans. Uh, and it's good to get this season going in the right direction. Here for 2022, we got a lot to talk about. We're here until 8 o'clock tonight, coming up around 7.20 or so. Head coach Matt Eberflus and general manager Ryan Poles will join the program as well. So, George, welcome to the 2022 season. It, it seemed uh, probably to you and many others, and I know a lot of fans out there, so much changed, so many different things, and now the dust is settling a little bit. We can see what this is going to look like. We see in uh, 2022 here for the season opener on Sunday. How how you feeling? How you feeling about everything? Excited. Um, still adjusting to the three game preseason and only one home preseason game. So um, we haven't seen the folks around Solder, but looking forward to getting back to it. And I think you saw um, a more disciplined team in our preseason games. And uh, that's a very encouraging sign as we head into the regular season. Yes, a lot of different things that we're going to break down tonight and talk about because it is a different look. And a lot of the things that we all as Bears fans uh, always hope for and what it will be like to watch this kind of team and their personality. And we'll get into that with Coach Eberflus and Ryan Poles as well. But uh, I know you, I, we had you on the, the fourth quarter of the preseason uh, finale in Cleveland. And I said, what about the hits principle that you enjoy? And you, first word is hustle and you, you had him. He had you, right? Yeah. Uh, the tempo of the practices has been a lot quicker, uh, a lot faster. Everybody's moving, the players, the coaches, the staff, uh, and it's very encouraging to see. And, again, I think you'll see that transfer to the games. All right. Ted Phillips, a lot of news this week, last week, I should say. So uh, have you gotten uh, used to the idea that uh, February of 23, uh, you're – you're moving into retirement. Uh, I know it was a lot of thought went into this and uh, took me by surprise the other day. I'm sure there's a lot of emotions. And uh, what's been going on since? I'm sure you got a lot of phone calls and text messages and emails. Uh, well, you know what? Um, 40 seasons is a long time, Jeff. And uh, I, I just have to, again, um, gratitude to the McCaskey family um, for the trust, the support through all the years. Um, it has been amazing. People keep asking me, well, what are you, you going to miss? Uh, I'm going to miss the people. I'm going to miss the people. I miss, it's, it's still after 40 seasons, I, I still kind of, it still kind of amazes me when I'm out and certain fans will still recognize me. I'm not used to that. But you know what? The interactions with all of you um, has been 99% positive all the way across. So um, I appreciate that. I'm going to miss that um, because our fans are the best through thick and thin. And at this time of the year especially, right, we're all excited. We're all excited about the season, the changes, and um, that's going to be hard to get used to missing. But um, it's time for me and uh, uh, I know that we have a lot of great staff, and we have uh, uh, the ability to find someone that's going to lead us into the future that's going to do it in the right way and 
continue with the values of the club and and know what it's like to be a bear with humility and uh, uh, great innovation and foresight. So they're gonna, we're going to find the right person to take over. You mentioned uh, 40 years, and you mentioned the people that recognize you to this day that you met maybe many years ago. There have been a lot of people through this building in 40 years. I mean, talking about coaches, scouts, personnel. You know, I had Dan Pompey's article on The Athletic, which was uh, extremely well done and, and covered your entire career. But when you first started here in 1983... And what you inherited over the course of time as you rose through and, and climbed the staircase, so to speak, to your current position uh, was a much smaller staff. Only needed nine coaches back in those days. Nine coaches. <laughs> nine coaches, Coach Ebu no nine pressure. Nine coaches. It doesn't seem possible. But <laughs> One football field. Yeah. One, fif yes. Fifty employees. Right. Now we have 250. I hard to believe, but you, you've been at the center of that growth. Uh, over that entire four decade, uh, how do you put that in the context? Wow, it's been um, it's it's been an honest it's been a pleasure. Every day has been different, and to see the growth, uh, not just of the Bears but of the entire NFL, the way the values of the teams has has skyrocketed, and to be a part of that. Um, it's something I'll treasure every day for the rest of my life. George, you had a lot of great quotes. I, I'm sure you, they come off your tongue right now as well about what he's meant to you and the family. Well, when Ted shared the news with our staff on Friday, I had to follow him. And um, I told the Bears family that, um, that I told Ted when he gave me the news that I had too much respect for him and am too grateful to him to ask him to reconsider. And now I'm wishing that I hadn't said that. Um, he's just been fantastic um, for the Bears organization, for our family. Uh, you mentioned being here in the PNC Center. This was the first significant uh, renovation of Hallis Hall that Ted oversaw in 2013. The more recent one in 2019 um, that Ted oversaw gave us one of the best training facilities in the NFL. And we're going to miss um, his leadership, uh, his sense of humor, uh, his drive, his passion. And um, the thing I feel good about is that uh, with Ted's help, we're going to find an excellent leader to follow him. Attending Sunday's game, be sure to stop by the Miller Lite Ultimate Tailgate located at the Field Museum for food, games, music, and more. Free to Bears fans of all ages, the Ultimate Tailgate opens at 10 a.m. through one hour post game. We're here at PNC Studio at Hallis Hall. We got some good friends here. What do we got, about 80 season ticket holders? Some veterans here have been around a, a minute. Uh, and we are on the Bears Coaches Show with Chairman of the Board George Hallis McCaskey and President and CEO Ted Phillips. So uh, the season opening up uh, on Sunday at Soldier Field. Uh, Virginia McCaskey, uh, no doubt, just can't wait to see it. Yeah, she gets excited about every season. She gets excited about every game. Uh, I'm sure she's listening tonight and will be uh, sending me a critique of your performance. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you get the critique, too. I, I know that for sure as well. Um, given all the change, given all the change, uh, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like tearing down a house and rebuilding it in seven months because there's, there's so many new players, so many personnel, so much going on, and then Ted's decision, um, and then everything else that you know, we're looking at here as well with the potential uh, purchase of a uh, Arlington Park that could become a, a new stadium for Chicago. Um, is this hard to put into context for you even as the chairman of the board because a lot's going on at once. Yeah, a lot is going on. Um, when you have Ryan on, he might dispute uh, the use of your re rebuilding the house analogy, but I'll, I'll leave that to him. Um, but there is a sense of excitement. There's a lot of change in the air, um, but a lot of it can be really positive if we do it the right way. What have you seen so far that you like uh, in the decisions you made to bring Matt and Ryan aboard? Uh, love Ryan's calm, his leadership style, um, his analytical abilities. Love um, Matt's uh, intelligence, 
what Ryan describes as Matt's emotional intelligence. Um, it, it looks like he's been a student of the game all that time that he was an assistant coach and thinking about what he would do and how he would do it when he got the opportunity to be a head coach in the NFL. And, and Ted, with uh, the history of this franchise, it's just always oozing from the pores of this building. You can walk around and see it all. And, and Matt and Ryan have both uh, have taken a very strong interest in that, the history. And it was brought up again at the news conference uh, today with Coach Eberflus with the media. Uh, he went through the 100-year the book uh, because it's, it's, it's all there for you to, to get excited about because now there's a new chapter going. Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't believe in what it means to be a bear, you, you need to be somewhere else. But what, I, what I've been loving about the preseason is seeing four or five jerseys on defense at the ball carrier every single play. It's been a long time since we've seen that. And uh, you can't ask for a better preseason in terms of confidence builder to take that next step, and it's coming Sunday. All right, I, I get asked a lot about Justin Fields. I get asked a lot about Matt Eberflus and what this is going to be, but I also get a lot asked questions about Arlington Heights. So a lot going on there. You're at the forefront of it. What can you tell us? Well, um, there's been a lot of work being done. A lot of people are, are digging in and trying to see if we can make this viable. Um, we've said it before, but the reality is we, we haven't bought the land yet. We haven't closed on the land. We might not. Um, if we do, I think we will do it by the end of this year, early 2023. Um, I'd like to have that accomplished before I, uh, I leave. Um, and if we do buy the land, it doesn't mean we'll develop it. Uh, we don't have a stadium design yet, so I, I know there's probably lots of questions on your guys' minds about tickets and seating and we don't we don't have that yet it's a 326 acre parcel um, that will be a stadium anchored development if it happens probably be the largest development in illinois history so there's a lot of economic benefits that can uh, go, go towards it um, and, and that's how it's going to get done is by trying to sell the economic benefits which will be staggering along with the jobs and an informational meeting uh, for community coming up on Thursday, 7 yes. to 9, at my alma mater, uh, Hersey High School. Yes. There in Arlington Heights. Um, what will be the gist of that? Both of you guys can chime in about it. Uh, well, Ted has said many times that um, we're concerned that people think that the project is farther along than it is. We're still in the exploration phase. Uh, we want to share what information we have, but we don't have all the answers. Uh, we think now, though, is the right time um, to get in front of the residents of Arlington Heights and the neighboring communities and show them what we have to this point. Yeah, they're going to see a preliminary concept that uh, if we move forward, will probably change over time. But at, at a minimum, it's exciting. It's exciting to explore this correct? It's yeah. a must to explore. It's very exciting. We didn't go out looking for this land. Um, Churchill Downs, who owned the, uh, the race course, the racetrack, excuse me, um, put it up for sale, and it was just too intriguing in terms of the access to the property, the size of the property, what it could be, the vision. Um, so we, we just felt like we had to put an offer in, and we got the winning bid. I'm excited about returning to your alma mater because I'm sure <laughs> he's in the Athletic Hall of Fame, the Academic Hall yeah, of Fame. Right. I want to see the plaques, the shrine, whatever they may have. Right, well, we'll take you on the quick 10-cent uh, tour. I, I, I haven't been back in that building in a long, long, long time, so uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be interesting to be there for sure and uh, a big moment in uh, Bears history. So, Ted, uh, we appreciate you coming on, and we appreciate everything that you've done, uh, and you got a lot of work left to do on the table here before uh before you go into retirement so from from everybody from my crew we appreciate what you have have been to all of us and um nothing but great success you're gonna have that you're gonna have, you're gonna have that itch i know it well, you know you know you're gonna have that itch for sure i get it every year and yeah. uh and you're a good man and so is tommy thayer your partner and i love you guys love you too all right appreciate it coming up we'll be joined by matt eberflus and ryan poles this is the bears coaches show 
Now, more of the Bears Coaches Show featuring Matt Eberflus and Jay. To PNC Studio at Hallis Hall, where with Bears fans are a family here. Season ticket holders on Labor Day. Hope your Labor Day is going well. Uh, now into uh, a different phase of our show. Please welcome the head coach of the Chicago Bears, Matt Eberflus, and the time. Appreciate it. Of course, Matt, you'll, you'll be here every Monday night with yours truly, breaking it down, right? Because you got everybody together. You got a little break. Uh, getting ready, a little light practice today, getting some guys healthy today. Uh, back on the field, Byron Pringle for one, Bayless Jones Jr., a little Lucas Patrick. So now you got a runway, right? You got a runway to the start of the season. How, how do you feel about it, Al? Yeah, it's good to get everybody back. You know, we've had some soft tissue stuff during training camp, which you always have. And then, you know, to get guys back and start putting them in there to compete, um, it was good. It was good to see the guys out there, and uh, we're excited to get this week started. Uh, like you said, today was a light practice. Um, you know, we took a team photo today, which is pretty cool. You know, we all got out there and took a team photo, and we did something special today. We actually had the coaches exit after this cool. Then we had a light practice, and then let, and they let the guys go. So, yeah. Very nice gesture because they're often overlooked in terms of what you have to do, and not from the inside, but people don't know what they do, how many people are involved, and they are <laughs> – they work as hard as anybody, don't yeah, they? Yeah, there's no question they do. So we had to show appreciation for them. No, but uh, it's, it's something they're always going to have. That, that's the memory of you made the final 53, you're ready for week one. And Ryan, putting to get together, uh, and I, I know I mentioned a house, but it's like seven and a half months of redesigning something. And the amount of work that went into that, it's just the crazy thing to me about football when that happens uh, and then you show up for your first practice, it all looks normal, like it, they've been doing But these, it's everybody's new. I mean, across the board, how, how'd you pull this off in seven and a half months? Yeah, it wasn't just me. I have a really good staff um, and, you know, base, and I've been really happy with the turnout. And then the other thing, too, is we have a great coaching staff. So, you know, with their involvement and, uh, you know, their willingness to coach these guys, especially the last, you know, uh, last weekend, you know, there's new players that haven't been here during camp and our coaches got them up to speed and we're excited about it. Well, uh, Matt, you talk about these coaches almost every time you're at the podium and, it, you know, you, you, you say it with a, a confidence mm -hmm. because you know these guys, especially the Colts guys you've worked with, but to get to know them and now let them see the... I've been around a lot of good teachers uh, that I've been under over the course of my career, so I've uh, learned what it looks like. And for me to talk to these guys when we, uh, you know, uh, hired them, it's about developing and teaching the players to become better players. And, and people always say that, you know, I was a college coach for 18 years, and they say, well, you can't, you know, the pros are where they are. I, don't, I disagree 100% with them. And uh, all those coaches believe that, and they're just teachers first and then coaches, you know, and then building relationships I think is really important so we can challenge those guys. Ryan, you must have been around people and Matt, you, you, yourself as well. There are some coaches that, okay, you're going to give me some rookies, but I, I don't know. I just don't have that faith. This gentleman believes in young players. Yeah. You have 15 rookies on this roster. It's a league high. Yep. Uh, the average age is just over 25, nearly, you know, not, not quite 26 years of age. Dragons make sure that we're teaching them. They're getting their bodies right, and they can play fast and, and learn our system. So to have coaches like we do is, is really good. And, and, and in turn, these young players, there's some innocence there when they're so young. They, you know, I mean, I'm going to get this opportunity. You know, you're not just relegated to the practice squad for the first player, a better mentally ready player. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think that's a good point. You know, you really want to just keep developing everybody on the roster. So it doesn't matter if you're slated as a starter and then you're also slated as a backup because at some point during the course of the season, everybody's going to play. And you have to be ready to play. So you got to be able to step in to that role and, be, and, and put a winning performance out there. And that's why we do that. So we always want to develop everybody on our roster from the first guy to the 69th guy. We want to develop them because you never know. This special edition of the Bears Coaches Show with Matt Eberflus and General Manager Ryan Poles is sponsored by Verizon, Bet Rivers, and Miller Lite. Once again, the voice of the Bears, WBBM's Jeff Joniak.
Great seats available to see your Chicago Bears this season at Soldier Field. Get your tickets at chicagobears.com slash tickets. With Ryan Poles, Bears general manager, and head coach Matt Eberflus, I'm Jeff Joniak. We have Bears fans here enjoying the show on their holiday weekend. That's right, getting ready for the 49ers. Ryan, uh, the other day your face lit up. You said, I love that dude. That comment about your affinity for the man sitting next to you right here, Matt Eberflus, is resonating. And um, what, what have you come to learn about all aspects of what he brings to the table now that you've gotten to know him very well? Yeah, the leadership part stands out. I mean, when he's in front of the room, and that's the one thing you don't know, you know, in the interview process. Um, but when he gets in front of the room, everyone's locked in, and he's passionate about what he does. And uh, he has everyone's attention. And he, you know, they're, they're locked in. By the time you're done with the team meeting, you want to go play football immediately after. So it's effective, too. So um, the other thing, too, is just detail. You know, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes just in terms of the schedule to move everybody around, uh, the coaching staff, the players. And uh, everything's been on point, and it's been running really smooth. You would think, he, you know, he was the head coach for a really long time. So it's been, it's been awesome. In turn, what have you learned and what have you come to appreciate about the new general manager. Yeah, I would say, oh, and I tell this all him all the time, is that the number one job of a GM is to pick players that really can play. <laughs> and he, he does a great job with that. Him and I have the same vision with uh, the type of players we, we, are, we covet, and he's got a great eye. I'm not talking about a good eye, a great eye for talent. And it takes a special eye to be able to see those guys and pick those guys um, you know, in the later rounds. Uh, you know, like Braxton Jones, you know, like different players like that, and, and he's going to continue to do that. And that's not only the draft, that's, that's free agency, and that's picking guys and claiming guys. And, and so I would just say that. What a, what a tremendous eye for talent. Well, just six claims last week, guys that are going to figure in uh, to the future of the Chicago Bears, uh, hopefully. And that's not a simple process either. And you and I spoke the other day. It's almost like a new draft, yeah. but you, it's a limited window, and you gotta, you got to put in the time. But, you know, you were looking for the traits, obviously, but you were looking for plays. Like, yeah. are these guys playmakers? And yep. do they fit what a bear looks like now? And you believe you found a few more. Yeah, yeah, we're excited. Um, and, again, it goes back to my staff and, and the process that we have. Shoot, that night we put <laughs> hours. We were until about 1 in the morning, you know, watching tape. And we, we had a board set up, and it was very similar to the draft, except you have 24 hours to get it done. Uh, so it's something I learned in my, in my past, and it's, it's part of our philosophy. And um, it, it, it's a, it's, I actually look forward to it. You know, it's a, it's a treasure hunt to look for guys that play our style um, and, and can help us win games. Do you get so intoxicated with the exercise that you maybe even wanted more? Yeah. And you yeah, had to say, always. hey, we got to. We got <laughs> to yeah. calm it down here yeah. for a second. We yeah. got to calm it down. So now you guys... Well, you are, it seems to me you were meant for this period. You were meant for this team, this city, this style. And I'm saying that to you. I mean, I really believe that. And you're just so humbly confident about what you want this to be. Their standard. You, you throw that word around a lot. Mm -hmm. But now do we close our eyes and know exactly what a bear looks like? Well, I would say this is that, you know, you have to be on, your, on top of that. Because, you know, as soon as you look away, the standards slip. And you have to make sure that you're on top of that every single day and every single rep because the standard is high and you have to uphold the standard. And what's been great is that we've had such great buy-in by the players. The players have really taken a hold of this about playing hard, playing smart, doing things the right way, playing an aggressive style, but doing it the right way, the smart way. And they just taken, taken, you know, and, and ran with it. And that's, that's great. But it's also uh, the leader's job, and I mean coaches and players, to uphold that standard. And that's a day-to-day -day, uh, process. And you can't ever let that go. And so if you, as soon as you relax and say, hey, you know, we're not looking at that anymore, you've got to look at it every single day. Have you personally ever burned yourself by taking your eye off along yeah, your way? I've learned that over yeah. the course of time where, you know, you, you, you take your eye off something for a minute and there it is it's it's it shows up and you got to just go back to the basics go back to the beginning and reset and that happens you know because our standard is so high there's going to be a little bit of slippage sometimes but uh, we got to just rein it in and just uh, keep going forward and the bears match up with the 49ers brought to you by miller light official beer partner of your chicago bears it's miller time bears fans jeff joniak along with coach and gm 
here at Hallis Hall at PNC Studio. We got Bears fans in here, season ticket holders, ready to let it rip. How loud are you going to be on Sunday? All right. Can't wait, can't wait. And, you know, we, we expect that from the home fans on Sunday, so uh, I guess it would be a good time to say, what do you need? What do you need from the fans on Sunday? Well, uh, you know, it's always, uh, you know, it's an exciting time for the city and it's an exciting time for the Bears, and, and we're, we're going to be ready to go. And uh, we want our fans to be ready to go, too. So you guys know you guys know football. You guys have been watching it a long time. You know when to be loud. And uh, just be as loud as you can in those critical moments uh, for us on Sunday. So I appreciate that. Ryan, uh, as it's currently constituted, and you've said many times, you're, gonna, you're on this uh, hunger to keep finding guys uh, that if somebody's better out there and fit, you're going to go get them. Uh, how do you feel about what you have for week one? Yeah, I feel good, and I'm excited to see them perform. You know, you, you have this checklist of things that you look for. You have, you know, off-season programs, OTAs, and then you can't wait to get the pads on. You get the pads on, and you see how physical they are. Can they hold up to that? And then uh, you get some preseason games. So now we finally get the lights to turn on. This is, this is real football. Um, it, it turns up a couple notches, and uh, I'm excited to see the guys perform. I, I think they're going to surprise some people. They keep telling us that, too. Yeah. Uh, any number of them. Hey, we're going to surprise people. This being overlooked and the, and the, the record predictions and all this stuff that, that comes with you know, football, it, it, that's part of it, I guess. Um, the fandom of it is, is so intense. The analysis is so intense. But you, you've got these guys believing, or maybe they just believe in themselves uh, by virtue of, you know, there's a lot of guys on this roster that have been marginalized their whole life, and you're, you're looking for those guys because they're hungry. The newest guy, Amir Marset Smith, I hope I got it right, uh, today, you know, are you upset the Vikings let you go? Yes, I have a chip on. They're not, I mean, sometimes it sounds cliche, but I think you've got a lot of guys that feel they're backed into a corner a little bit. Do you sense that? Yeah, I mean, the guys, I think, have come together because of the experience they just went through. You know, they've, they've uh, had an off-season program, and then they go through training camp. And as you guys know, that the, it's, it's not easy. You know, and I think that when you have a training camp like we did, I think it brings guys closer because they go through something that's difficult. And now they understand what the standard is, and they started to see that pay off. And they started to see it, you know, you know uh, come to light. And they can see it, say, wow, this, this, is, this is something good happening here. So I believe that the guys are getting closer and closer, and, and the team chemistry is getting better and better. And it's all going to come down to Wednesday's practice. You know, we're going to have to have a great Wednesday's practice. That's when we have pads on. Uh, we're going to have to thud. We're going to have to hit, hit each other pretty good, get, uh, own the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, so that's going to start there and then get more into situations on Thursday into third down and finish it off with red zone on Thursdays or Fridays. So it's an important that we do the work on the practice field, and that's going to be a part of our preparation for game time. If you have a practice that doesn't go to your liking, do you get nervous about Sunday? Uh, well, you know, nothing's ever perfect. You know, so you always look at corrections, and you will get those after practice. And we'll, if something's there, we'll have to work on the next day. We'll do that. So you know, it's always it, that's your job as a coach and, and a leader. You just got to make the corrections and move forward, um, and go to the next day. Ryan, uh, Justin Fields is a legit national story right now. Yeah, everybody's like coming around, taking another look at what they've seen. I believe because of that preseason finale, but I mean, we're talking about X player. We're talking a lot about about this man right now. He's starting quarterback in a football crazy town and a passionate fan base, a beloved franchise, a large media market. Is he ready for it all? Yeah, I think he is. You know, if you look at his history, I mean, I think he was the number one high school recruit coming out, you know, and then he had, you know, his, his success at Ohio State. Um, and if you know Justin, you're around Justin, he is as steady as he is can be. He never gets too high, never too low. He just works at his craft. And I know we're both proud on how he's attacked this whole change. Uh, they've thrown a lot at him, and he just keeps answering. And get, he gets better, and he just chips away, and uh, he's ready to go. So. And he mentioned this. He wants to be coached hard. He uh, an interview recently, uh, and Luke Getze, I, I, I don't watch, and I can't see exactly what goes on in that room, obviously, but I get the sense he coaches him hard. Is that what Luke is doing? Well, he's just a, like like all the rest of the coaches. He's a teacher, you know. So he's built the relationship like the rest of the coaches to have the ability to challenge, you know. So uh, you want to be able to challenge the guys as a coach, 
and you challenge them to get better and, and, and give them the understanding of what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then they understand, you know, hey, it's going to help us win. And uh, that's an important piece to it. But uh, you have to build the relationship first before you can challenge. And those guys got a tight relationship, as Janoko does, and the rest of those quarterbacks in that room. That's a really good room. All right. Your decision to go into the quarterback meetings, was this uh, something that you felt you were going to do? Or, I mean, how did that all come about? I don't know that a lot of coaches do that. No, I think it's important for the head coach to be in there because uh, your quarterback has to know that your head coach has his back. And I think that uh, he understands that the whole football team has his back, the head coach has his back, and we're all in there to uh, make sure that uh, everything goes right as a football team and, and how he fits into that football team. So it's, uh, it's an important piece to it. Are you finding that as a first-time head coach, uh, I, this is almost a silly question because you are so organized and you are on it, but is there enough time in a day? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's enough time. If you're organized, there's enough time. I mean, the day goes fast. There's only so many minutes in a day, but it goes quick. But uh, you have to be on top of what you want to get done in that day. All right. I need to consult you for ideas on how I can fit everything in in one day as well. <laughs> the Bears Coaches Show continues exclusively on the home of the Bears, 105.9 WBBM. Welcome back to uh, PNC Studio at Hattasaw. Jeff Joniak along with head coach Matt Eberflus and general manager Ryan Poles. Bears fans have been great tonight. Appreciate you guys. See you at Soldier Field. And we'll talk to you on the radio. Our pregame at 9, kickoff at noon with the entire crew, Ron, Jim, and Jay, myself and Tom, and our uh, esteemed broadcast crew. Uh, it's also time to look ahead. Brought to you by Bet Rivers, the official sports book partner of the Bears. The Bears will kick off a new season and a new era Sunday at noon when they welcome Trey Lance and the 49ers to Soldier Field. I say Trey Lance, you say what, Matt Eberflus? Yeah, I say that, uh, you know, we got a chance to watch him play. Uh, last year he put, started in the Arizona game, uh, kind of middle of the season there. And uh, the team I was with last year played, played them right after that. And he didn't play in the game that we, were, we played against. But, uh, so we got a chance to look at him. And uh, he's a tremendous athlete and a tremendous talent. Um, you know, he gives you a lot of problems uh, because he can run the football. And, um, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a lot to handle. So we're going to have our, our challenge ahead of us for our defense, and uh, we're excited about that challenge. And so is Debo Samuel. I know you faced him in that uh, game against the Colts, and uh, he was here October 31st and had himself a game as well, just a unique kind of football player. And, uh, you know, you want to bring him down when he ca- if he's going to catch it. Make sure you didn't yeah. get the yak. And that's why they're like the number, yeah. I think, number one or two team in the NFL with yak yards last year. And Debo's a big part of that. And Kittle's a big part of that. So, um, you know, they're obviously very strong with running the ball and they're taught the right way. So we're going to have to, our challenge in front of us on defense. All right, Ryan, uh, what is the best story to come out of the preseason, in your opinion? I think it's, you know, our roster coming together. You know, I, I go back to the uh, event coach had with, you know, down with the Cubs, you know, and I, I saw a team, you know, that was unsure of all the change and they started to gel and they started to come together. So I'm just looking forward to those groups playing together and have each other's back, you know, when the lights turn on. So. Yep. Tight end Cole Komet said it was one of the best things he's ever been a part of. Yep. Obviously he likes hitting the baseball too. So, <laughs> you know, he, he cranked a few home runs. That was a, a, a tremendous experience for a guy who loves the history of, of this sports town now, that's certainly a, a place to do it. Uh, but let, let's talk about some of those guys, the guys that we feel are on the cusp, you know, could take a big giant step here. Justin obviously is one of them. Um, where else are we looking here? We're looking at Darnell. We're looking at Cole Komet. Um, they're going to get their chances to make a mark on this offense. And then the running game. You, you talked in the break about, you know, hey, I like seeing guys run over guys. Is this going to be a physical, nasty offense, first and foremost, before we start talking about what could be an aerial show with a guy who's got a great arm? Yeah, I mean, we all believe this, and and I know the Bears fans will appreciate this, is that, you know, we believe in a strong running game. You know, so that's an important piece to this. You know, it really sets up a lot of things for Justin and the offense when you're able to run the ball with Montgomery and, you know, and have a lead back in there and being able to do different things. Uh, that we're, we're able to do on, in the running game. So it sets up a lot of things for us. You know, it keeps us ahead of the sticks. It, it's, it's just a, a good formula for winning. You know, so we, we believe in that strong running game. I, I lo- loved your answer last week when people are talking about, you know, what's around, okay? There, there's a lot of young players ready to get an opportunity to develop. And 
you, as the general manager, have to be pragmatic in your approach. You're building an entire roster. Yeah. And is that always in the back of your mind? Because you could pull the trigger on many different things if you so choose. Yeah. You know, there's a level of patience. Um, and, you know, we want to do things the right way. And right now, <clears throat> the way we've done it was, you know, through the draft and as well as through claims and free agency. So uh, it's coming together. And but there is a level of patience you got to have to do it the right way so that you can sustain it over a long period of time. Offensive line loaded with young guys at this point. It's one of your wheelhouse positions. You played it, obviously. You, you wore the uniform here in 2008 when you came in as a rookie undrafted. Uh, do you feel your eye is sharp and you know what you want yeah. at the offensive line? Absolutely. And it's coming together. I've been really impressed with, you know, Braxton Jones coming in and developing so fast. And, you know, he's been hungry since he came in. He wanted more and more knowledge. He's spent time with, with Chris Morgan, and he does extra. And he just continues to get better every single day. So that group's coming together nicely. I approached a couple of writers in the locker room today, open locker room. We're back in the locker room. It's kind of strange. Some of these players have never had microphones in their face because of COVID. Uh, but it's, it's great to get to know the guys in a different way. But uh, I said, hey, you know, you're not believing that the takeaways are going to happen. You know, Lovey said it was going to, yeah, this system, it's going to happen. And it's about creating the opportunity to get the takeaway. Yeah, there's a, lo a level of luck involved too, but the passion and the, and the unbelievable attention to that detail, do you truly believe it's going to create? what you believe will happen. Yeah, and I think there is a little bit of uh, luck, but it's not that much because you have to uh, create those opportunities. And you create the, the fumble by doing strip attempts. And that's on every play. You know, So we want to make sure we're doing that every single play. And then you create the recovery by hustling to the ball. So if there's no hesitation when you hustle to the ball, you will be there when the ball comes out. And if you expect it to be there, it will be. And uh, we have to do a great job of technique of how we recover those fumbles when they're in close quarters and when they're on the open field. So we practice all those things. We practice how we return the ball. Um, so it's, it's something we're very fanatical about and uh, something we uh, pay attention to every single day. That's the fumble part. How about now the pass that gets tipped in the middle of the field? Because as long as everybody's running to the ball with their hair on fire, I mean, this, this for example, looks to me like a golden opportunity for an Eddie Jackson for Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon, these guys, get Jalen Johnson, to get the ball in their hands. They're all talking that way in the locker room, too. So you, you got them thinking feverishly about this. Yeah, and really when we play the style we do, we, know we play more zone than most people, so our, we have a lot of set of eyes on the ball. And so when the ball does, does get tipped or thrown in your area, we're able to break on it and, uh, and have a chance. All right, we have less than a minute. Final message uh, to the fans uh, from Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus about what we're going to expect here in 22. Yeah, we're excited. I think our, our future's bright. And, uh, you know, I'm ready to get this thing kicked off down at Soldier Field and see how live these guys can get. Give them a sample. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank all the fans uh, for all your support and, and the players. I want to thank the players and all the staff for all the hard work we put in over the last seven months to get to this point. But we're excited to, for the competition that we're going to be in on Sunday. We're excited to get it going. And so when you walk in there as head coach in that tunnel for the first time in your NFL career, it'll feel different for, I'll, for I'll, one I'm second. I'm going to say, let's go. Let's go? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to. Echo those thoughts. Let's go. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Look forward to a long, uh, enjoyable season doing these shows. So, for Bears, Chairman of the Board, George Hallis McCaskey, President and CEO Ted Phillips, General Manager Ryan Poles, and Head Coach Matt Eberflus, and our producers, Dan Barilli, Jordan Treadup, Andy Gersher, Keith Johnson, Elisa Fielding, our engineer Paul Zarang, and you fine folks for taking your holiday time to spend it with us. We appreciate it so much. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you to our loyal season ticket holders and sponsors for your continued support of Bears football. We'll be talking to you on the radio Sunday at 9 a.m. Kickoff at noon. Ron Gleason, Jim Schwantz, Jay Hilgen, my broadcast partner, Tom Thayer, for the noon kickoff. Good night, everybody. This is News Radio 105.9 WBBM.